Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a MedEd short lesson and we're going to talk about reversible causes of dementia. Alright, let's get to it. All right, reversible causes of dementia. Let's get to it. So first, let's go over the goals of today's lesson. We're first gonna talk about what is dementia, so let's define it. And then we're gonna go over different reversible causes of dementia using the very appropriate acronym, dementia. All right, so first of all, what is dementia? So we define dementia as a decline in cognitive function involving one or more cognitive domains. And what we mean by cognitive domains are things like learning and memory, language, uh, executive functioning, complex attention, perceptual motor, and social cognition. So we need a decline in one or more of those categories. We also need a decline from the previous level of function. So the baseline for the patient is really important so that we can compare uh, how that function has changed. Next, the dementia must be interfering with daily functioning and independence. Now, most commonly, dementia is caused by a neurodegenerative disease. Uh, so by neurodegenerative disease, we mean there's some sort of breakdown in the uh, brain cells or signaling pathways that result in these symptoms. Uh, the most common form of that is Alzheimer disease, accounting for 60 to 80% of cases. And although neurodegenerative disease is the most common uh, reason for dementia, it's really important to rule out reversible causes. Sometimes estimates are around like 0 to 23% of cases uh, can be caused by a reversible cause. Uh, and these things have immediate actions that we can take to uh, alleviate the dementia. So it's really important to go through and assess whether that might be the underlying cause. So with that background, let's get into the reversible causes. And we'll be using this convenient acronym, dementia. So starting with D, this stands for drugs. So specifically alcohol or any medication that has anticholinergic effects. Uh, and this includes a wide array of different drugs but any sort of drugs that are an antagonist on the cholinergic receptor, uh, that can result in the dementia symptoms. Next, E is for emotional, specifically depression. And this generally occurs with very severe cases of depression. Uh, sometimes it's even referred to as pseudo-dementia. And basically, uh, the patient is so impaired from the depression and they're so slowed down that symptomatically they appear uh, to have cognitive decline, but really the depression is the underlying cause here. Next is metabolic causes. This again is a whole host of different things, but some examples are hypothyroidism uh, and different toxin exposures. E is for impairments in the eyes or ears. N is for normal pressure hydrocephalus. And what this refers to is a buildup in the cerebrospinal fluid within the ventricles of the brain. And this buildup exerts pressure and compresses the brain. And as a result, we get the cognitive decline in dementia symptoms. T is for tumor or a space occupying lesion, such as a subdural hematoma. Uh, and the way this causes dementia is really similar to normal, normal pressure hydrocephalus. Again, we get this uh, pressure and compression of the brain uh, resulting in symptoms. I is infection. Uh, some specific pathogens to know about are syphilis and HIV. Uh, and here we can get inflammation in the brain uh, causing uh, symptoms. And lastly, I is for anemia, uh, specifically vitamin B12 or folate deficiency uh, leading to a megaloblastic anemia. Uh, so this is going to be due to some sort of vitamin deficiency. Uh, and basically with anemia, you're not going to be able to form red blood cells uh, properly. And so you get less capacity to carry oxygen to the brain. And so this hypoxia in the brain will result in the dementia symptoms. 
Okay, let's summarize what we went over. We learned that dementia is a decline in cognitive function from the previous level that interferes with daily functioning. It's most commonly due to a neurodegenerative disease, but it's important to first rule out reversible causes. And these include drugs, emotional, such as depression, metabolic causes, eyes and ears declining, normal pressure hydrocephalus, a tumor or space occupying lesion, infection, and anemia. And that you can remember by the dementia acronym. Okay, these are my references if you'd like to learn more. Um, a lot of this acronym came from this first article here. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, share, subscribe. Take care everyone, and I will see you in the next one.